Today I'm going to show you my five favorite ways to create a whitewashed finish on different species of wood. Let's start with some red oak. I sanded it to 150 grit, made sure to wipe off all of the sawdust, and then applied some Varathane pre-stain wood conditioner. This prepares the surface of the wood and helps the whitewash stain penetrate more evenly. I used a foam brush to apply a thick coat of Varathane whitewash. I let the stain soak into the wood for about 10 minutes and then used a clean lint-free rag to wipe off the excess. This is the important part of the process because how hard and how consistently you wipe determines the evenness of the stain. So if you want it to be more splotchy and time-worn looking, you can rub out different places harder to remove more of the stain. And if you want a more consistent finish, you just wipe evenly across it. I suggest doing this process in the same lighting conditions that you'll have the finished piece displayed in. That way you can really fine tune it by hand exactly the way you want it to look. Oak can be a very difficult wood to stain because it sort of resists even coloring. Poplar, however, really absorbs different finishes. And I like to use it when I want to create a really hazy, super even and consistent look. Once again, I sanded the boards to 150 grit and removed all the sawdust. But this time, I'm going to water down some Rust-Oleum chalk paint with about a one-to-one -one water to paint ratio. This diluted paint mixture absorbs right into the wood. And once again, I use a rag to kind of even it out. The result is a real subtle, nice, hazy finish. And you can layer on additional coats of diluted paint to reduce the visibility of the wood grain. I love using poplar and this technique when I want a super matte finish and the chalk paint is perfect for that. It just has less of a shine than even a flat latex paint would. If you want more of a rustic look, I suggest using rough unsanded for two by fours and a thicker mixture of the chalk paint and water. I'm doing about a 70% paint to 30% water mixture. And this time I'm just applying it heavily and not wiping off the excess. I like to apply this kind of finish to at least three sides of the boards before assembling them into a panel. It just makes it easier than trying to get the paintbrush into all the cracks. Rough two by fours can still move a little bit. So that's why I created some spaces in between them in case the boards expand. And I just use popsicle sticks to do this. Now the boards look almost completely white so I then used a sanding sponge of about 120 grit to sand down the high points of the grain and reveal a little bit of the natural wood color through the paint. This option also gives you a lot of control through the sanding process. You can reveal more of the wood or just keep a few hints of it peeking through. And now for something totally different. I made this panel out of cedar 2x6s and I'm going to use grout that typically goes in between tiles as the finish. I moistened the wood with water and then applied a thick coat of grout with a putty knife. I then use a wet rag or a sponge to even out the coating. I really like using grout in combination with wood. It sticks to the wood fibers and it's a super durable stain resistant finish, particularly if you use one of these advanced pre-mixed single component grouts. This technique works well with both sanded and unsanded grout and I really like how it fills in the spaces in between the boards as well as any knot holes or dents in the wood. This finish really looks old world because back in the day they didn't have plasticized paints and so this plaster coating gives you a really authentic vintage look. Up next I'm going to make a panel out of fur 2x12s. I sanded them to 150 grit, applied Varathane pre-stain wood conditioner, and then used Varathane whitewash the same way that I did to the oak. Once the whitewash had fully cured, I then applied a layer of grout over the top. This is to more fill in the recesses in these more curved or warped boards. And it also gives me one more layer of whitewash to really even it out and make it nice and hazy. I really like this technique for making headboards for beds, flooring for mezzanines or loft spaces, or even feature walls where you wanna use some nice wide boards to reduce the amount of labor. I made these surfaces for my friend and food blogger Radhi Shetty and they all slide into this handy little station that gives her a lot of photography options for her work. If you want to see the video for that project, be sure to click on the link in the description box below. Now there are a lot of other ways to whitewash wood and let me know your favorites in the description box below. Check out some of our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.